Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all for this next lecture in this course on the analytical spectroscopy microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. In the past couple of lectures that I have tried to cover first in the first lecture what is the scope and uh, relevance and who may be benefited some of those aspects have been covered in the first lecture. Then I started with uh, in the second lecture I have taken care of aspects relevant to the atomic absorption spectroscopy because it is uh, uh, we will not be going too many in details in this particular thing. So, we have completed that. Today, we will look at in this particular uh, uh, lecture uh, something on the separation techniques particularly. The reason why we require a separation techniques is that uh, when you do a reaction in the in the laboratory in a, for any chemical reaction. Uh, you are trying to make something, uh, but you get a product. When you get a product, it is not necessarily true that you get only the product, nothing else. But there could be some other, you know, precursors, unreacted, or some impurities, any of these things. So, this requires a kind of a, a separation, purification kind of things are required. So, therefore, for this course, the prerequisite is the purification or separation. Therefore, I have taken up one more topic to cover in this uh, particular course itself. Uh, instead of uh, talking about separation techniques, in that I take only the uh, chromatography based uh, techniques in this. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, we will be using uh, the instrumentation for different techniques, but you do not need to really understand the electronics, physics behind all these uh, you know, uh, techniques, but all that you require is to look at how such a configuration, how such an instrument uh, works in that. Okay. So, let us look at uh, the chromatography kind of a separation technique. Separation techniques obviously are the ones which you can use either in the small molecular like in the chemistry lab what you do in the small molecular uh, aspects and in the biochemistry lab you work with the large molecular weight things, proteins, nucleic acids, other things. So, we look at general features of many of these things uh, in terms of their purification, separation uh, both putting together that we will be looking at. Then many of these uh, chromatography techniques are connected with the detection are also further connected with uh, the uh, identification kind of things. Okay. So, so these, when you say separation purification also goes without saying that the identification of those compounds as well. So, uh, if you look at the simple chemical molecules, the separations are basically are uh, based on their uh, you know the nature uh, in terms of their solubility, in terms of their melting points, in terms of their boiling points, in, in terms of their crystallizations and many of these aspects of it. If you were to move to uh, the uh, high molecular weight or the biomolecular species like proteins, nucleic acids. This is not going to be uh, these parameters whatever you talk about uh, the melting, the crystallization, the boiling, the miscibility, uh, solubility these are not going to be the issues. The issues or the parameters which uh, determine the separation are quite different. Okay. So, these uh, particularly these are dependent on their size, molecular weight, uh, they are different in shape, size molecular weight, charge, hydrophilicity, hydrophobicity of these their surfaces and their interaction towards certain species. Okay. So, for example, the stationary phase you have some kind of an interaction. So, all of these I will be explaining a little more detail as we keep moving across this particular uh, uh, thing. Uh, so, what are, what are other kinds of things? 
as I said that the separation techniques depends on the principles of the uh, charge, size, molecular weight, all of these. So, uh, and so you have an ionic kind of a species where you can have ion, ion exchange, you can have some kind of an adsorption on the surface of the, uh, of the stationary phase or they get partition between the stationary phase and the mobile phase. So, that kind of a division that is what you call as a partition and there is some size in the in the in in your uh, stationary phase there are certain kind of a uh, uh, species having different sizes. So, the protein molecule for example, can uh, smaller ones can get trapped the larger ones need not get trapped uh, they may be outside. So, that kind of thing. So, size based one size exclusion you can talk it uh, in terms of. So, there are many uh, kinds of uh, these uh, uh, properties of being utilized in terms of uh, separating purifying the proteins. When you make the proteins, when you isolate the proteins, you do not generally synthesize, but you isolate, you isolate from cells. It is not only the protein what you wanted will come, but you may get many other unwanted proteins of different molecular weights as well. So, that therefore, one can separate all of these into using these kind of a uh, techniques. So, essentially what we have looked at uh, is that the separation of uh, uh, small molecular species. So, which we uh, they basically do in the laboratory synthesize in the laboratory uh, molecular species and large molecular species molecular weight species. So, these are primarily biological or natural systems. Okay. So, the other thing that one needs to remember and uh, keep in mind is the stationary for the chromatography you look at the stationary phase and and the mobile phase. So, whenever you take a sample you expect that you have whatever you want plus you have few other things which we do not want. So, that is where you need to do kind of a partition between the stationary phase and mobile phase. Either you can take your compound into the mobile phase uh, early as compared to the uh, impurities or the reverse process as well. So, but there will be a uh, two basic uh, components of these things. So, that kind of a partitioning will also decide this. So, therefore, the size, the molecular weight, the charge, the surface adsorption and quite a few of these aspects are important change. So, using these kind of a basic principles, uh, you one can design a huge number of uh, chromatography techniques. So, the, like uh, the chromatography techniques such as the column chromatography, ion exchange chromatography. So, uh, column chromatography is a quite uh, basically is a kind of a common nomenclature. So, many things you fill into the, the stationary phase you fill into the column that is why it is referred as the column chromatography, but it does not tell what kind of a material you fill those things we will look at uh, a bit later stage. Ion exchange chromatography where you have an exchange between one ion which is there at the stationary phase with that of the ion which is there uh, in your mixture. Gel permeation and the, the, your, your stationary phase may have uh, the uh, pore kind of a structures. So, it is a gel uh, with the pores. So, therefore, the passing through the pores is the permeation kind of thing. Affinity chromatography you have some affinity towards certain things. So, that means, you have a, a special interaction special liking between the one which is anchoring onto the uh, uh, stationary phase from that of your analyte, there should be some kind of a specific uh, kind of an interaction. Uh, that interaction is not present with the impurities, it is present only with the compound that you are looking at. So, that is the affinity kind of a chromatography. So, these are all the basic principles on which based on which your separation takes place. The paper chromatography where you can use, this is used mostly for small molecules in the laboratory for a most often a qualitative and semi quantitative kind of a purpose. 
So use that stationary phase here is a paper. The paper itself is a stationary phase. So in the affinity chromatography, it is the affinity column which is a stationary phase. In the gel permeation, it is a gel which is a stationary phase. The ion exchange chromatography, it is an ion exchanger is the one which is the stationary phase. Okay, thin layer chromatography, like the paper chromatography, you can also make the stationary phase into a thin layer, which is most commonly known as the TLC, which is the first thing that one does in the organic synthesis is that putting a spot on the TLC and look at whether your reaction is complete or not by looking at whether your starting material is completely consumed or not consumed. So based on that, okay. So I'll be explaining those things, the principle wise, how it moves, what it means. Everything is coming up in the future slides. Gas chromatography. So here we are not referring to the stationary phase. We are referring to the mobile phase itself. Okay. So stationary phase is the solid, but you can apply a gas and you can also convert your compound into gaseous state. And then that gas is being carried over, over the stationary phase so that there is a separation takes place. Liquid chromatography, so just like that you will use a liquid, uh, a combination of liquids uh, depending upon their polarities or various other properties that would bring a differentiation between your compound and the uh, impurity. So that differentiation, this liquid chromatography and this liquid chromatography if you put with a higher pressure, it will go to HPLC, high pressure liquid chromatography. So you can use dye ligand. So there is a, a kind of a colors coming up when you uh, have your compound uh, you know connected or attached or interacting with the uh, with the stationary phase. Then uh, you have something uh, called hydrophobic interaction chromatography which is generally not used in the uh, in the small molecular compounds which is very commonly used in the proteins and uh, other biomolecular systems and pseudo affinity. There is partly affinity kind of a thing, a part of the affinity, a part of the, uh, the passage kind of thing. So, so very many uh, techniques are possible. So, at least uh, quite a few of these, I, I think I talked to you about uh, close to a dozen kind of a techniques. Let us look at at least a few of them with the basic principles and then how it functions. So, so principle and process, principle and function kind of thing. First one, let us look at the uh, thin layer uh, chromatography which is uh, uh, referred as the TLC. So you have uh, here this is uh, basically outer jacket which is a beaker. You have some solvent kept in it and this is a small plate uh, which is coated with uh, silica, uh, silica, silica gel kind of coating is there. Okay. So this you are putting into the thing, this is your liquid and you are putting your compound or mixture as a spot over there okay? and that is what you are seeing here. So you put as one spot of your compound and this is, now you leave it. So when you leave it what happens is this solvent starts creeping on this and it creeps and it start, starts eluting the your compound and whatever is there is a mixture. So it is not only your compound, there could be some impurities also. So they will start moving. So you see a purplish color here and then as you move you see one red and one small bluish and then the red is here, blue is moving etc. etc. So that means in this particular example you have two pieces, one is shown by the red, other is shown by the blue, one is shown as a B, other is shown as a A, a component A or, or compound A, compound B and you get separated out. You see that? So that is what is the separation or it is not necessary for two, you can also have three. So you can see here, so you started here your mixture and this has come to as one, two and three A, B and C. So how do one uh, sort of uh, speak about these in terms of their rate of flow ratio? So that is rate of flow ratio, how are they? Uh, they all not have gone through the same rate one is stuck here, other is gone beyond and this part is the solvent front. Solvent has moved quite farther and whereas your compounds have moved uh, uh, lower. So therefore, the solvent mode if you take in the denominator and to what extent the, your compound is moved and the numerator, this ratio is the, this is the or a factor they call it as. So in this particular case, 
you are looking at one of the component A and the solvent is B A by B and this is going to differ for different compounds. So, therefore, your uh, RF values will differ for different compounds therefore, using that one you can separate that. So, it is not necessarily 2 you can have 3 you can have 4 etcetera. So, uh, so that means your mobile phase what is the mobile phase here the solvent you have used. So, this itself is uh, we call it as a solvent, but in terms of chromatography you call it as a mobile phase. So, this need not be one single solvent it can be mixture of 2, mixture of 3, mixture of 4 different compounds why you need to play with the polarity of it. So, you can change the polarity by making different combinations of these solvent mixtures in that. You can also see another example instead of even using uh, a, a thin layer you can also use a column. So, this is using a column and then uh, you have the uh, material and you have a solvent it goes through this etc. This is not shown and now the compound is moved uh, and therefore, you have a some oranges, pinkish, yellowish etc. A, B, C. So, you can see now you can cut each of these band and then extract it so that you can separate the compound. So, physical not only just looking at in the TLC you do not separate it, but using the column you can separate it. So, the TLC is called the a qualitative kind of a check. Uh, if you have a column, you can make a, a, a quantitative separation. So, I, I hope uh, one understands that. So, you can separate uh, quantitatively as well. So, these are all very commonly used for small molecular you know synthesis in the lab. Suppose, if you have a large molecular one. So, what you can use instead of the here you have used the silica is the silica as on the plate as well as the, as well as the silica is filled in this column as the stationary phase and then you have used whatever the mobile phase and then you have separated. Now, if I go to high molecular weight uh, species like uh, uh, protein. So, I have a protein and a mixture of proteins with the different uh, size or molecular weight etcetera etcetera we will use instead of silica gel use the uh, use a gel permeation. So, gel is made of either the dextran or the polyacrylamide or agarose. So, many modified of all this. So, these are the materials or the uh, gel materials. So, instead of these you can use for the stationary phase in case of the uh, macromolecules or proteins. So, in case of proteins uh, you can use uh, gel permeation uh, technique. So, where uh, the, the gel is made of uh, uh, a, a dextron which is also known as cephrodex, a polyacrylamide, agarose if anybody wants to know the structure of this you can just google it you will get the whole structure. These are all polymers polymeric materials and they can be made as a powder, they can be made as a beads, they can be made as a gel. So, here in this case this is used as a gel, but you can also use and the gel has different pores and now just have a look at it and this is your gel material in terms of the beads uh, this being used and this is the column and this is the mixture protein content means you have different kinds. The ones which is shown as the bigger one and, uh, and the one other one is shown as a smaller one. So, that is where you can see these are all either another protein or another impurity or whatever it is there. Now, so you allow that to go through. So, it will get some of them get trapped the smaller one get trapped the larger one comes out and they, they also move slowly, but they, the larger ones which are not trapped will move faster. So, therefore, your rate of flow will differ and first what you will get here is a bigger one which are not trapped and later on as you keep eluting further pushing it out is called elution. So, eluting it out. So, therefore, that will make uh, the, uh, the smaller one also to come out of uh, these things. I hope you understand. So, same kind of a principle here what you have used in the small molecule here you have used for the large molecule uh, systems. Here you have used a small plate on which your silica gel is being uh, pasted as a small layer. So, that is called a thin layer chromatography. 
which is most often used for qualitative purpose, most often. And whereas the columns are uh, used for separating things. So, you already have first what they do, a researcher, what they does, uh, even in your MSc practicals, you will do that. First thing is you use the TLC, then your teacher will ask you separate those compounds. So, uh, completely, quantitatively, then you will go for the column. So, using the column, you can separate the, these ones. Hope that is clear. Okay, if you go to the higher uh, molecular weight thing, there are quite a few methods are there. I talked to you earlier, which is uh, one is on the uh, size difference, uh, size variation. Okay, uh, so size uh, uh, difference or variation, and that principle is used is called the size exclusion. So, certain sizes are excluded, certain sizes are included. So, included into the uh, the bed material. Bed material means is a stationary phase. So, that is what you refer as a bed material. So, stationary phase, so inclusive and exclusive. Exclusive means they are outside the stationary phase and inclusive means they are inside. So, the using this size exclusion principle, you can uh, separate that one. So, you can see an example over here, you have a kind of a, uh, a column, you have put your material this is a combination of some bluish and reddish kind of thing and their sizes are also different etcetera. You can see the large and smaller one and as a principle the smaller one go through into this and this is your bead. So, you see that this is the bead and these guys go inside this bead they get trapped and these one will not go. So, they will come out see here. So, in the second step you can see that the red ones are inside trapped and the blue ones are outside. So, therefore, uh, uh, they will move slowly because they are getting trapped and the, uh, the blue ones which are bigger one will go faster. So, you can collect this first and you can see the peak coming over here and you can collect them. Uh, this. So, what is the y axis here? Y axis is depending upon what kind of a detector you used and later on we will look at that. Many different kinds of detectors are there I'm, as a, I wanted to uh, you know do, there is no need of going to many details in this particular uh, topic in this course. Therefore, I have not given you more of a detector details etcetera. So, many kind of things RI detectors, UAV detectors, uh, many different kinds of detectors used. Nowadays, people use for these ones even other high level equipment like a mass spectrometer, uh, you can send it to uh, uh, gas chromatography, you can send it to the uh, um, even NMR, many kinds of techniques are there. So, that depending upon your y axis thing. So, in this you can see the first elution and the next elution is coming over here. So, therefore, uh, the x axis will be time you started. So, you start your clock and you start collecting it. So, in the collection here uh, up to this time there is nothing much of your sample has come, but here the blue sample has come and here the red sample has come. So, there are two things. So, similarly if you have 3, if you have 4, if you have 5 with the different size. So, they are excluded by the size. So, that is why they are referred as the size exclusion uh, things. Hope that is clear understandable. If so, let us move it to the other technique which is ion exchange uh, chromatography. Itself says that there is an exchange between one ion and another ion. So, you have your uh, stationary phase let us say column and then you have some uh, ions are there which can get exchange with the ions over there. So, these can get exchanged with that. So, this is the bulk and this is the stationary phase and that is what you can see over here as a principle. So, this is your stationary phase, there are some ions are present, there are ions are present outside, the outside ion can get replaced with the inside uh, on the which is connected to this particular thing. So, that means your column, your stationary phase has, uh, has let us say uh, a cationic uh, which is connected and the anion which is mobile with the external. So, the external anion will come here, internal anion will go out. So, this cation is connected to that. So, this is the anion exchange column. Similarly, you can have reverse. So, in the reverse uh, what you would do is exactly the, the reverse that reverse is uh, you can see that. Uh, so, you have your surface you have your connected one is cation anion and the free one is cation. 
So you have a cation gets exchanged with this. So this is what is called uh, cation exchanger. So this is of course the stationary phase. So stationary phase can act as an cation exchanger here and as well as as the anion exchange, not as well as as a separate one as an anion exchange. So you can choose that one and that is what you do. I hope that is clear. Okay. So this anion cation can be smaller size, a bigger size, all that you can use. It. So these here, if the cation is anchored onto the stationary phase, uh, the counter ion is anion, therefore it is called anion exchanger. If the anion is anchored onto the stationary phase, it is the cation which is mobile, so that can get exchanged. So it is called cation exchanger. So ion exchanger, just now you have seen the principle. So therefore, uh, you ion exchange material is here and you have put your compound. So therefore, the ones which get exchanged and the one which is not exchanged comes out first and then what is got exchanged can be taken with a varying your solvent, varying your elutent. So, whatever is the elution mixture you change you will get. In case of proteins you can use a low salt, medium salt, high salt concentrations. So, based on that you will get the compound different proteins out of that. Those which are exchanged will come later at a higher salt concentration. Those which are not exchanged they will come at a lower concentration at an early stage. You can plot as a function of salt concentration you have used as a mobile phase or as a time. All, all these kinds of things are possible with this. Okay, uh, I talked to you uh, two of the uh, techniques uh, size exclusion ion exchange affinity. So, here affinity is that uh, is that where to this stationary phase you attach a, a, a small uh, chemical moiety. And now you have a mixture. So, in the mixture, so, uh, you have different kinds of a species. So, those which have a selective uh, binding, selective affinity, selective interaction, so they will get stuck onto the stationary phase, remaining things will uh, come out in this. So, uh, the example that is shown over here, you can see this is the stationary phase the small arrow kind of thing is the affinity lead point which will recognize your let us say protein, but not all pro other proteins. So, this is put a different shape, this is put a different shape, this is put different shape. So, these are all different kinds of let us say proteins of which one of the protein having this kind of a shape. Uh, so, that gets, but this is not by size, this is by the affinity means interaction. So, there is a there is a weak intermolecular interactions and which are specific. These are very specific. So, that means, this kind of weak interactions are not formed with this, not formed with that, not formed with that, with anything else only for these ones. You see that? So, three different uh, uh, the same type of ones which are. So, you can make your bed which is the column stationary phase with these kinds of a species and uh, they can recognize and they can attach, they can interact and separate from the other one. So, the other ones will come out first and then your component is attached. Then you use some other techniques to uh, de dislodge because they are already with bound with some weak intermolecular forces. Now, they need to be dislodged. That means, you break those forces after removing all this, then you can get the other one. So, example you can see you have different colors, different types, different shapes uh, just to show as a pictorial way and these are the different kinds of proteins, impurities etcetera and this is your uh, column and this uh, kind of a line shows that it is attached with the tag uh, which can have a affinity towards your specific protein, but not for other ones. So, that is called as a ligand. So, you have a ligand which can recognize only your, your protein and not the other proteins. So, you allow it to go, wash it, all other things will come. Now, use different kind of elutent so that this weak interactions will break and that will come out. So, you would have already taken out all of those kind of things. Okay. These are basic principles I have already explained to you both for the small molecular systems, large molecular systems and that is where the chromatography uh, principles do work and then we will see a few examples etcetera in the coming up class uh, in order to understand 
these ones. And also we will look at some stationary phase columns, some kind of elutants, all those things as we keep moving across the one. So in the, in the next class, I will show you some uh, the chromatograms. So the chromatography is a technique. Uh, So the chromatogram is the one which uh, you get, you, you collect it using the response. So the response versus time, response versus volume, response versus rate, that will give rate of flow, what I mean is rate. So rate of flow and this graph is called the chromatogram. So I will explain you all of these in the next class. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.